So we've got a little break in the weather. It's a perfect opportunity to get on with some renovations here. Today, I'm going to be scalping this lawn with the cylinder, overseeding in the majority of the areas, but we're going to pay particular attention to some smaller areas. And then we're going to spread Jack's magic. And yes, I have got new trousers. Throughout history, men have always been drawn to grass. Whether it be in the park, a sports ground, or simply in your own garden, there's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbors. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year, whilst you create your own lawn journey achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. So today we're going to be concentrating on some of these patches. We've got like squash worm casts or a little bit of disease damage. In the main, the lawn's in good condition. The heat last week dried out the manhole cover. I just managed to catch it in time. So that really has come back from last week because it was just like orange. Uh, but that'll come back with a bit of uh, Jack's magic and some feed on there. They say in the main, it's a great lawn already. So that's why we're doing the renovations today because we're not really relying on the new seed to uh, boost the thickness of the lawn we're just adding to it. So we'll scalp this off, get our kitchen fork out, ruffle these patches over like uh, these bits here, drop a bit of seed in individually, and then in a couple of weeks, this lawn will be good to go. And look at that, the sun's just out, just in time. What did they say? The sun always shines on the righteous, and how true is that? So let's get our mower out. I'll swap the cylinder cartridge over because I've got the scarifying attachment in there at the moment. We've already scarified here, as you've seen in a video a few weeks ago. So now we can just get on with removing all this top growth so we can get the seed right into that soil base. So I did actually cut this lawn on Monday on number two. I'm going to do it on number one today. Remove more of that top growth because it's easier to do it with the rotary because it's got better suction. And then we'll get on it with the cylinder and reduce it even further. So let's get on with it. So that was quite hard work for that mower actually. It uh, was struggling to get through that at parts because it was quite long. So even though we've cut it on one, we've still got uh, quite a lot of growth which we can get off. So I want to scalp that even more. So now time to get the cylinder out and then that'll really act like a plane and really scalp this. So uh, watch out for a lot of grass coming off that. I'll need a few bin bags to pick all that up. but. This has to be done, unfortunately, because as I've said in previous videos, we think about all the grass that's going to grow in the summer and in the future. If we don't take it off now, it's just gonna grow on top of this. So when we get to July, August, we're gonna have a real spongy lawn. So this just allows us to start from scratch. Oh my God, what have I done? It was fine, wasn't it? But now I've gone and done this. But look how short we are now. So all those crowns will just regenerate with nice new, fresh growth. And then we can keep it this short because we're not losing control of that length, like is what I've mentioned before. So even though it looks an absolute mess, this is what has to be done. And we know it comes back because I've done it before, so it's just all experience. So if it is your first time, 
don't worry it will come back nature's good in that respect so now i've got this done i'm just debating whether to whip over it with the scarifier one more time just to create some grooves um so the seed can fall in and uh give us a better get a better coverage but we'll make a decision in a sec because i don't really the thing is once you've scarified again and then you have to go over again with the mower to pick up what comes out you end up negating what you've just done because the mower then closes up the channels so it's if we can get on it with the scarifier and it doesn't really bring anything up we could do it and um, so i'll make that decision in a sec and you will find out shortly what decision i've made so i'll go and uh, have a play with it and uh, see what happens right so you can just see i've done a little area there I've, i need to come back and get closer to the edge but there's not much coming out and the, what is coming out i can either just get the blower out and blow it off or get the rake out and rake it up so i think i'll carry on and i'll get that done and then we'll blow it um, and then we'll, we'll blow it onto the road and then we'll sweep it up i think that's the best way forward so i'll just uh, come back and do a better job on that left corner and then uh, see all the grooves we've got there which the seed can fall into then and that'll give us a better uh, germination rate and uh, just be better all round so let's crack on Well, so that's a job well done a bit more material came up than i'd hoped um so i am actually just going to rake this up and then that avoids getting any uh like we say big machines on it to close up those grooves and with the prevailing wind blowing up the lawn um i can't blow down the lawn so a rake it is time to get those bingo wings in order Right, so that looks a hell of a lot better, I must admit. Great job, well done. I always do a good job. I always do a good job of ruining lawns, but I do an equally better job of bringing them back. So what we'll do now is that wind's picked up a little bit um, from when I first started, and I've got to spread the seed now. So what I'll do is we'll do it on a very low setting, um, and we'll go left to right and uh, try and avoid getting uh, too many seeds blowing where we don't want them uh, you can wait because you live at your house i just have to crack on uh, because i've just got so much to do i have to make decisions based on um, like 30 customers not just like my own garden so if you've got a garden and it's windy and you've got seed to do just wait till it's still i just can't um, and that's just the nature of my job so I always do things right if you can but me, I've sometimes got my hands tied and I can't. So I'm going to show you now what I'm going to do with those little areas, those patches. I'm going to incorporate some seed into those and tell you the do's and don'ts of when you're filling in a little patch. So I just want to show you how to fix these patches of compact soil when we want to put some seed on. If we just put the seed on there, it would just wash off. So you get your fork and we just scrape the surface a little bit and just create a nice airy bit of compost or soil you know the root zone that's already in there just for it to sit in because the start the seed has to be able to turn because it just doesn't grow the root out on the nearest contact to the soil it only grows out of one end and if that ends pointing upwards the seed has to turn to allow it to root properly so we have to leave it the space to do that so if we just put that on and then went like that and squashed it down it wouldn't be able to turn so we wouldn't get good germination so we're nice to this is where we do need air to be in there because you want a nice fluffy condition for it to sit in and secondly what you don't want to do we don't need a hundred seeds in that one spot so we don't throw a handful down and then go yeah that'll do because it'll just get a big clump 
you'll die off, you'll get disease. So all you need to do is you literally just need sprinkle three or four seeds in there and then just put it in like that. Plants got, uh, the grass seeds got nice airy conditions to turn in. And then that's that. Same there, just one or two seeds. Maybe four or five on that one. And then that is enough. And any water that falls in there will just drain through. So I'll get on with the rest. And then we'll seed the whole area. And then we'll get on with the Jets Magic. So I'm going to overseed this at 35 grams per square metre. So I know it's 100 square metres, so I've weighed out 3.5 kilograms in my hopper. I'm going to go on a very low setting because I got asked this question just earlier on. What setting do I use? What I do is weigh out what I need, and then I know that's the accurate amount. And then I just go on a very, very low setting and do multiple passes until I run out. And then I know I've got it spot on. Right, so that went on pretty well. Took me two passes, uh, one up, then one across, and then I just finished off with what I had left, just in the spreader, just walking up and down. I'm not gonna feed this today or anything like that. There's enough feed in there from the rise and shine to give us what we need, and then there's fertilizer in the um, Jack's Magic. And then once that seed comes through, we can get with some Saw Pro, and then Equilibrium, because that'll be in by then. And then in two or three weeks, this lawn will be looking something like. I like to set a May Day target for these jobs, and then we know we, uh, we, we give us a deadline, and then we know we have to uh, come through as if we just said, oh, when it will be, when it will be. It just, uh, it, we just get a bit lapped, and, but I know if I say to a customer, it's gonna be a first to make, it's gonna be right, I know I've gotta come down every day and water it. Um, so it just gives me a bit of discipline, and gives the customer something to look forward to, uh, and for them to crack the whip, which they need to do sometimes. So I'm going to uh, set up with Jack's Magic now. I'm just going to show you a new uh, technique that I've never used before with it in terms of uh, just, I'm just going to tip it out in the bag because I've got enough and I'm going to use my big landscaper's rake with it today. So I'll be able to get all those little humps and bumps out of it uh, and leave just behind what, uh, what we need in terms of like nice fine peat. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes because like I say, I've always only ever got a bag and thrown it on the ground first but because it's windy it's just gonna be blowing everywhere and to be honest I'm fed up of having black hands by the time I've finished and it's a pain to wash when you get home so we'll just try something new today so we'll see you in a sec okay so everything's ready just gonna tip a bag of Jack's Magic out the reason I'm using Jack's Magic on this side is because all my levels are perfect I don't need to go up against the edge with anything we just want to get this grass seed growing and this is the perfect material to do it. So like I said, this time, I'm just gonna literally tip it out. Because we've got our big landscaper's rake, we can just crack on and do it. Now, the funny thing is when I bought this, I actually brought my angle grinder to work because I was gonna chop the ends off. I haven't yet, because I think it could work without it, and it does work without it, but I still think it's a bit too big Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, no, no, it'll do this. But other times I'm very much in the let's chop it down camp. So, so it's just easily done. Because it's not sand, we don't have to worry about leaving humps because it's quite easy to, to move around because it's very light. If we've got any lumps in there, we can just break it down. And what we're looking for is just to spread it until we can see the, the tips of the old grass coming through and then we know we're not smothered it too much. Whereas if we just left it like that, there's no way the grass seed or the old lawn would be able to get through that, I don't think. But what do I know? I've only been doing it 20 odd years now. So we'll just uh, continue with this. See, it's dragging out all these little lumps and bumps as well, which is good because we don't really want those in there. So we'll find at the end when we do our last bit of raking, we'll have a big pile of fibrous kind of lumps that we uh, we can just pick up and, and get rid of. Or you'd even just like give it a bit of a hit with that and try and break them down a bit. And if I just left it like that, it would just perish there. 
So we need to break it up and leave it a nice tilt on the surface. And what we don't want to do is leave a load of the uh, lumps on the edge. We need to get rid of those. So we need to push all those. Uh, so you see how we've got the, the rakes filtered out? All those bits that are no good for us, really. It doesn't matter if they stay on the lawn. The, the grass will break, break them down eventually. But you can get the majority of them off. That's, uh, that's even better. So, sun's out now, it's a bit windy, fed up with the winds. I think uh, they come in the winds at this time just to blow any residual leaves off the trees. And if you have beech hedges this time of year, they're still covered in the dead leaves from last year. And I think it just comes in just to clear those off. And then once they're gone, it just calms down then. But it does annoy me at this time of year, these high winds, because you just can't get on with anything, especially spraying. Because what I would have liked to have done today was sprayed some Stella Bio Boost just before we put this on. But it's not to be. So you can see, got a lot of fibrous stuff here. I'll just keep spreading that out. It's almost like a riddle. And what I'll do is I'll just pile them up over here. And I'll get my flexi tub and we'll come and pick these up. Last year, if you remember, I put some of the compost tea on here before we seeded. And I really do think that helped. So we could do that again. And that again would start to help break down any compost lumps. But you see what we've got there, we can just uh, pick up and put in a flexi tub. So one bag there, just so you, if you ask how far does a bag go, let's just kind of pace it at one, two, three, one, two, three, almost like one bag will do. If you're just leaving it on a nice tilt on the surface so you can see the grass coming through, one bag does roughly nine square meters. So that's a good thing to know, isn't it? And you don't buy too many or don't buy too much. Oh, sorry, uh, not enough. So yeah, so what we'll do is do that all over and then we'll call this one done. So that's another one charted off the list. Easy, nothing I did that you can't do at home. All you need is a rake, compost seed, and a lawnmower, and a scary fire if you've got one. So that's all for today. All I need to do now is water, but it's gonna be raining for the next few days still, so that's gonna do some of the work for me. No sprinklers, especially if you're on a hill like here because the seed and the compost will just wash away. But if you don't listen and it does happen, please do come back and tell me because one of the things I love in life is a great I told you so. So until we meet again, take care and I'll see you soon.